good evening. You're watching the news at six with me, Shan Rasul. The news at six is all about the day's biggest developing stories, and we'll be filling in on them over the next half hour. Of course, the big story that's been happening today is the tussle in Delhi. This time over, Delhi law minister whose fake degree has come into question. He's being faced with police arrest. So uh, we'll be talking about that with a special guest as well. But first, the headlines we're tracking right now. Delhi Law Minister Jitendra Singh Tomar arrested for fake degree. The Aam Aadmi Party claims its vendetta for fighting against corruption. Delhi government intensifies row over anti-corruption branch appointment and forms senior police officer appointed by Lieutenant Governor that there is no place for him. Congress leader Sonia and Rahul Gandhi slammed the BJP government at the centre, accused Prime Minister Modi of centralising power and dismantling welfare state. MERS or MERS care grips South Korea after seven deaths and 95 infections. The World Health Organization calls it the biggest outbreak outside of Saudi Arabia. Our top story this evening, Delhi Law Minister Jitendra Singh Thomar was arrested by the Delhi police today morning in connection with a fake degree case. Multiple charges of cheating and fraud have been slapped on him, a development that triggered strong reactions from the ruling Aam Aadmi Party. The party in fact claims the arrest is a pressure tactic from the centre. Embarrassment for the ruling Aam Aadmi Party government in Delhi. Its Law Minister Jitendra Singh Thomar has been arrested on charges of furnishing a forged law degree while filing his nomination papers for the assembly polls. Tomer's arrest has triggered a huge political storm in the national capital, with the opposition BJP and Congress going up in arms, demanding his removal from the Delhi cabinet. But a defiant Ahmadmi party trained its guns at the centre, accusing it of settling political scores. We demand that Tomer should immediately be able और अगर इस तरह के मुकद किससे और आते हैं तो हम निश्चित रूप से ये मांग करेंगे कि इस सरकार को अपने सरकारी पदों पर मुख्यमंत्री बने रहने का अधिकार नहीं है अगर आप कोई कार्रवाई नहीं करते हैं तो कि आम आदमी पार्टी तो बड़ी नैतिकता की बातें करती थी बड़ी बड़ी बातें करते थे तो अब कहां गई उनकी नैतिकता क्यों नहीं उन्होंने उसको पहले से इस्तीफा करवाया जैसे ही ये मामला सामने आता और जांच हो जाती ठीक निकलता तो वापस आ जाते अब जब पुलिस ने अरेस्ट करा है और केसेस जाहिर बात कर दिए तो मामला बहुत सीरियस है हमारे हमारी ये मांग है कि जितेंद्र तोमर को इसी वक्त हटाया जाना चाहिए जहां भी जो आदमी भ्रष्टाचार कर रहा है वो पकड़ा जा रहा है ये आम आदमी पार्टी सरकार की दिल्ली सरकार की अब तक की सबसे बड़ी सफलता है और इस सफलता ने भ्रष्टाचारियों के मन में खौफ पैदा कर दिया है और सत्ता में जहां भी जो भ्रष्टाचारी बैठे हैं वो सब इकट्ठे हो गए हैं वो साजिश रच रहे हैं दिल्ली में तानाशाही के जरिए इमरजेंसी जैसे हालात लगाने की कोशिश की जा रही है हंड्रेड ऑफ आम आदमी पार्टी सपोर्टर्स गैदर्ड आउटसाइड द हॉर्स खास पुलिस स्टेशन सुन आफ्टर तोमर अरेस्ट प्रोटेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट द मैनर इन विच ही वॉज हेल्ड द पुलिस हावेबर क्लेम इट हैड सॉट तोमर्स टाइम लॉन्ग गो asking him to join the investigation but the minister did not do so jo bhi uh, prescribed procedure hai uske mutabik hi isme karwai ki gayi hai to uh, jo bhi mananiye uh, kisi bhi sadasya ke khilaf agar koi karwai karni hoti hai uske liye kuch processes prescribed hain un sab ka karwai ki gayi hai The police crackdown on Tomer followed an FIR registered against him on Monday night. It was based on a report submitted in court by the Bhagalpur University which says Tomer was never a student there. Ironically, Tomer's law degree bears the stamp of issuance of the same university. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Another the fabulous political editor at the Business Standard now joins us to help us understand this ongoing tussle in uh, Delhi that uh, it just seems no end to it but this time around uh, the Aam Aadmi Party certainly uh, a little on a sticky wicket uh, especially its law minister because the, uh, the Delhi police also just held a press conference and uh, they say, uh, said that uh, all the evidence that they have and their investigation points to that his degrees are fake Well, I think uh, I heard the, the the Delhi Police press conference, and at least the facts that they are citing seem to suggest that uh, they are on the right path. That 
he uh, i mean i don't know how many degrees that he's got are fake but uh, certainly his law degree is not uh, not a real law degree because the the number of the registration number of the the roll number that he cited mm -hmm. uh, belongs to somebody else all right so uh, he might be on a sticky wicket but as far as the political fallout for this is concerned the aam aadmi party claiming it's vendetta politics for its fight against corruption but uh, the center saying it has nothing to do with it but that's also not really true isn't it well you know like in everything else uh, this is all partially true you can't argue with the facts the facts are that the bar council made a a uh, 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 recommendation the bar council made a complaint that his uh, law, law degree is not a real one the police investigated and found that it was not it, that was the case that it was not a real degree uh, the bar council could have made the similar complaint about anybody else uh, about any other professional in this case he happens to be delhi's law minister mm. uh, but the the politics of it is quite different i think uh, the delhi government has to come to terms with the fact that the real powers that it has are virtually amounting to nil mm. and until it can uh, gather steam and uh, get other opposition parties uh, to investigate and to to change the constitution uh, i'm afraid they have very few powers and uh, they have to come to terms with that All right, Aditi Fadnas, do stay on with us because we will talk about the other fight that is on in Delhi. Uh, that this is not about the law minister, but about the anti-corruption bureau and the Aam Aadmi Party government and the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi are at loggerheads over this. This time, the Kejriwal government has raised the cudgels against Najib Jung over the appointment of ACB Chief K M Meena, the LG appointee. Amid a bitter confrontation between the Delhi government and the Lieutenant Governor over his appointment, M K Meena has taken over as the chief of the elite anti-corruption branch, saying he will follow the L G S orders. His joining came despite the AAP government refusing to allow the Joint Commissioner of Delhi Police to take charge. Meena is an L G appointee. मुझे बताइए कि जब C N G Fitness का केस जब खोलने की बात एंटी करप्शन ब्यूरो ने की दिल्ली की सरकार ने की था उसके बाद अचानक एंटी करप्शन ब्यूरो के चीफ को क्यों बदला गया द डेली गवर्नमेंट रिफ्यूजल केम एज दे क्लेम देर वॉज नो सैक्शन पोस्ट ऑफ ज्वाइंट कमिश्नर इन द प्रोब एजेंसी Delhi Police Commissioner B S Bassi stood by his deputy, defiantly asking anyone who had a problem to talk to the Lieutenant Governor. In my opinion, there is no reason for this. So, until the order of Mukesh Kumar Meena Ji is given, until then, they will be there. And if there is no objection, then I am sure the administrator. यानी जो तकरार चल रही है उसकी वजह से पूरी यहाँ पे प्रशासन व्यवस्था एकदम ठप हो गई है आपने बड़ी लंबी चौड़ी लिस्ट दी थी केंद्र सरकार को आपने चौतीस पैंतीस करोड़ का बजट दिया था अब अधिकारी दे दिए तो आपको खुश होना चाहिए इसमें विवाद का है बात का है मीनवाइल टेकिंग दर फाइट विद द एल जी फर्दर द डेली गवर्नमेंट ट्रांसफर्ड होम सेक्रेटरी धर्मपाल ऑन ट्यूजडे विद इनपुट्स फ्रॉम विपिन चौहान ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी and political editor at the business standard aditi fadness is with us in the studio to help understand this tussle uh, between the delhi government and the lieutenant governor we spoke about the law minister and the, the battle is literally out on the streets over there uh, for that one but uh, as far as this tussle over bureaucratic appointments is concerned that this certainly is affecting governance itself in delhi isn't it aditi You're absolutely right because uh, you know then if this this kind of a diversion uh, happens diversion of power happens then uh, bureaucrats are also empowered they also feel that they should uh, cozy up to the political masters and the whole idea of uh, a totally neutral bureaucracy which will follow the law and not follow political direction then becomes uh, it becomes irrelevant so uh, this is a very very dangerous trend and i think uh, if uh, the the bureaucracy feels that uh, it can actually uh, empower itself by uh, kind of uh, uh, sucking up to one or other political master then it is a very very sorry state of affairs i don't think it should be encouraged at all mm. and uh, frankly 67 seats or otherwise regardless uh, if the the chief minister feels that he is so powerful mm. and that he is not being allowed to function despite being so powerful well he has to look for other options 
All right, but Aditi, what's the how, how how does one get out of this mess? Because it seems that both Najib Jung and through by proxy to almost the central government and the Delhi government have uh, sort of come to a point of no return. And uh, how do you see this playing out? Because this is not even the first this is not the, the first hundred days of the uh, Aam Aadmi Party government are just completing in Delhi. So from here on, it certainly looks a difficult uh, task as far as governance is concerned. Well, I don't think the LG or the central government is going to pull back from what they think is the right course to take, where they, they feel that the constitution is behind them. Uh, there are mistakes have been made by the Aam Aadmi Party. I think this whole controversy about the law minister was totally, totally avoidable. They knew it was coming and they chose to close their eyes and believe that just because they've got six, 67 seats, uh, the constitution doesn't matter, the laws of the land don't matter. That's not the way to function. If you, if somebody in your government has made a mistake or has erred uh, by commission or by omission, well, he has to pay the price for it. For it. Mm. Uh, as far as the central government is concerned, well, the central government is just looking for opportunities to to trip up the government. Mm. That is the worst kept secret in, in in India today. So it will seize those opportunities, and uh, you know, dem dem democracy and democratic politics and power politics is um, is involves the people but it's also a pretty ruthless game mm. so i don't think they should uh, the delhi government should expect any quarter uh, and ex you know use all kinds of uh, specious uh, excuses uh, to to prevent something from happening right. having said that we do have a controversy over the antecedents and the educational qualifications of the hrd minister mm. The union HRD minister, hmm. and I think the central government should actually. Uh, I mean, those who live in glass houses cannot afford to throw stones. <laughs> that, that is one thing that certainly uh, holds true in politics, but then politics is all about throwing stones at each other, isn't it? But thank you very much, Aditi Fadnis, for coming in and helping us understand uh, the politics of Delhi right now to play a little better. Well, on that note, we'll take a very quick break, but a lot more on the other side, all the sports and international news, so stay tuned for that. Stitching up an anti-BJP front in Bihar. RJD agrees to Nitish as CM candidate. But will Lalu accept seat-sharing plans? More eagle clashes round the corner. Watch the big picture at 6.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back here watching the news at 6. Uh, now onto the Congress party news from there. The party held a day-long conclave of its chief ministers in the national capital today. Party President Sonia Gandhi called upon the chief ministers to work with the centre in the best interests of their states. But also to confront the Modi government when it works against public interest. Attacking the functioning of the Narendra Modi government, Sonia Gandhi alleged that the government was engaging in a double game. With the Prime Minister talking of good governance while allowing his co uh, colleagues to foment communal polarization. Sonia also accused the government uh, with making systematic attempts to dismantle the welfare state. The day-long meeting deliberated on the strategy to oppose the India government on legislations like the land bill and the food security law. We went through uh, various issues, especially pertaining to the North East. We then also discussed uh, the UPA, our own UPA programs, the Yojanas, which have actually been appropriated by the Modi government with slight changes here and there. Uh, we discussed what is the effect on the state, particularly because the financial allocation for these programs has been slashed. It has uh, been slashed in very important uh, areas like women and child development, uh, I mean health, education, across the board, all uh, the important yojanas of the UPA. Universally, CMs ne kaha ki Modi sarkar kehti hai ki CMs ko paisa de rahi hai, magar ek hath se deti hai paisa, dusre hath se leti hai. Piche aage se deti hai, piche se leti hai. 
तो ये बात उठी दूसरी बात उठी कि जो हमारे किसान हैं गरीब लोग हैं उनको सरकार बिल्कुल भूल गई है तो हमने चीफ मिनिस्टर से कहा कि जो गैप दिल्ली की सरकार बना रही है उनका फोकस गरीब जनता पे कमजोर जनता पे होना चाहिए सीएम ने लैंड बिल पे भी बात की मेक इन इंडिया के बारे में बोला मेक इन इंडिया के बारे में बोला कि भाई बहुत अच्छा लोगो है बहुत बड़ा शेर है मगर शेर की आवाज सुनाई नहीं दे रही है Now the Coast Guard has launched a massive operation off the southern Chennai coast to trace a missing aircraft with three crew members on board. The crew members consisted two pilots and one observer. All of them are said to be highly experienced. The government has pressed eight ships and aircraft into the service to trace the Dhoni aircraft. The aircraft was on a routine surveillance off the coast of Chennai on Monday evening when it lost contact. There was no contact established with the aircraft except. that the chennai radar of the airport and trichy airport radar picked up this aircraft till 2 1 to 3 hours that means about 9 23 pm when this aircraft lost was lost on the radar of both the trichy as well as of the chennai airport For all the other national stories, let's take you nationwide. The national capital region is all set to get bigger with the UN Urban Development Minister Adankaya Naidu approving the inclusion of three new districts of Jind, Karnal, and Muzaffarnagar in the region. With this, the total number of districts included in the NCR from neighboring Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, and Rajasthan has gone up to 23. The Anti-Corruption Bureau of Telangana on Tuesday conducted raids at the residence of TDD, TDP Minister Devan Reddy in Hyderabad. Reddy was arrested after being caught offering a bribe to a fellow legislator to influence his vote in the state legislative council elections. The houses of two others who were also arrested in connection with the case were also searched. The Jharkhand police and the CRPF shot dead 12 Maoists, including a top commander, in an encounter in the Palamu district of Jharkhand. The Maoists were reportedly travelling in two vehicles. While one of them fled, the other rebels opened fire on the forces, which included assault groups from the security forces. Cyclonic storm Ashoba is expected to intensify into a severe cyclonic storm. The cyclone is moving towards the north northwestwards and likely to encourage rainfall at most places over coastal Karnataka, Konkan and Goa as well as South Gujarat. Gujarat is in fact issued a warning to fishermen along the coast after the storm. On the second day of his visit to Shimla, Vice President Mohammad Ahmed Ansari addressed the 22nd Convocation Ceremony of the Himachal Pradesh University. The Vice President underscored challenges related to environment changes and community resilience. He said several international treaties, conventions, and agreements were underway to help build public awareness in this regard. So, time for now for another quick break. But coming up on the other side, all the international news. Stay tuned for that. As science beckons India into the future, Rajya Sabha Television partakes the responsibility, bringing technology to the Indian people. Let's take a look at various important science events in the country, monitoring scientific advances as they unravel. Intergovernmental panel on climate change has proposed a complete ban on fossil fuels. Welcome to Eureka. Interviewing the country's greatest minds. Project the power of science to benefit and transform India. Rajya Sabha Television, Democracy at Work. Welcome back. You're watching the news at six. Now, news is coming in. The army today disclosed that in a rare departure, it engaged in hot pursuit of the militants who ambushed a convoy in the Chandil district of Manipur on the fourth of June. 
in which 18 army personnel were killed. Addressing media persons, Major Ruchika Sharma said early this morning that they engaged two separate groups of militants along the Indo-Myanmar border. On the 14th of June, 18 soldiers were killed in an ambush in a village close to the Myanmar border. In the course of last few days, very credible and specific intelligence had been received regarding further attacks that were being planned to be carried out inside our territory. These attacks were to be carried out by some of those groups which had been involved in attacks on security forces personnel earlier and some of their allies. In view of this imminent threat, it was mandatory that an immediate response was warranted. And based on the intelligence that had been gathered by us, we conducted operations to counter these attacks. Early this morning, the Indian Army engaged two separate groups of militants along the Indo-Myanmar border at two different locations along the Nagaland and Manipur border. Significant casualties have been inflicted on the militants and as a consequence of this operation, threats to our civilian population and the security forces personnel have been averted. International news now and G7 nations have issued another stern warning to Russia to stop helping rebels engaged in violence in Ukraine. It hinted at stronger sanctions if the Minsk ceasefire deal isn't implemented fully. The summit that concluded yesterday also issued a warning to Greece, saying that it doesn't have much time left to strike a debt deal and remain in the Eurozone. The G7 summit in Germany ended with a stern warning to Russia over the Ukraine crisis. The G7 nations had a consensus that Moscow could face stronger sanctions if violence continues in eastern Ukraine. Condemning Russia's move to annex Crimea, the G7 nations called for full implementation of the Minsk ceasefire deal struck in February this year. However, Russia blamed Ukraine authorities of holding the G7 hostage. Our European partners reaffirm that they will maintain sanctions on Russia until the Minsk agreements are fully implemented, which means extending the EU's existing sectoral sanctions beyond July. And the G7 is making it clear that if necessary, we stand ready to impose additional significant sanctions against Russia. Und wir sind auch bereit, sollte das erforderlich sein, was wir aber nicht wollen, gegebenenfalls Sanktionen zu verschärfen, falls die Lage das notwendig macht. Aber wir sind der Meinung, dass wir alles darauf setzen wollen, den politischen Prozess von Minsk voranzubringen. И тем самым, вот заняв такую позицию, ввязав санкции с выполнением санкции против России с выполнением одной России и Минских договоренностей, наши западные партнеры, конечно, стали чем-то вроде заложников украинского правительства нынешнего. The G7 summit also concluded that Greece doesn't have too much time for a dead deal to stay in the Eurozone. Leaders said that Europe is prepared to show solidarity if Greece implements economic reforms. Wir möchten, dass Griechenland Teil der Eurozone bleibt, aber wir haben auch die klare Aussage, dass Solidarität der europäischen Länder und auch des IWF mit Griechenland auf der anderen Seite erfordert, dass Griechenland Maßnahmen umsetzt. La Grèce a well, some more international news now in Global Buzz. Emergency crews are battling a fire outside the Ukrainian capital Kiev following a huge blast at a fuel depot. Three firemen were reported missing after the blaze triggered a powerful explosion. According to officials, at least eight petrol storage tanks with a total capacity of up to 900 cubic meters are ablaze. At least 17 people were killed while 31 others injured after a truck rolled off a cliff in Peru. The truck was making its uh, way uphill around a curve on a dirt road when it rolled backwards over a cliff, killing several school children, a teacher and parents. Authorities are investigating the crash and the driver who survived has been held by the police for investigation. Families of two Yemeni men killed in 2012 have sued the United States. The families alleged the men were innocent bystanders hit by missiles from a U.S. drone strike. They are also demanding an acknowledgement of their unlawful deaths. In the lawsuit, the families of Salim bin Ali Jabbar and Walid bin Ali Jabbar said that 
their debts violate the laws of war and norms of customary international law. The US Army has taken its website down temporarily after a hacking attack and said it had to take measures to ensure there was no breach of data. According to the BBC, the Syrian Electronic Army that supports Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has claimed responsibility for the attack. Last week, the US said Chinese hackers had attacked federal government computers and compromised the records of its 4 million employees. In a bid to simplify and improve its sluggish performance, HSBC will share almost 50,000 jobs and take an axe to its investment bank. The bank today said that about half the staff cuts will come from the sale of businesses in Brazil and Turkey. The other half will come out of cutting about 10% of the remaining staff by consolidating IT and back office operations and closing branches. Now, just a month, few months after the Ebola scare was contained, the international community is now grappling with the MERS or the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. At least 95 cases have been reported from South Korea with seven deaths. Hong Kong has issued a red alert advisory to all those traveling to South Korea. After Ebola, it's the MERS scare now. South Korea has reported seven deaths due to the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome so far. With 95 cases of infections, the outbreak is the biggest since MERS was first detected in Saudi Arabia in 2012. As few months, the government has vowed to end the outbreak. Meanwhile, Hong Kong issued a red alert advisory asking people not to travel to South Korea. The Middle East respiratory syndrome is caused by the coronavirus. Symptoms include fever, cough, and breathing difficulties. It could also cause pneumonia and kidney failure. Unlike Ebola, MERS is not very contagious. A person with MERS is estimated to infect less than one other person. In case of Ebola, it was at least two people. But the risk factor is that MERS virus could mutate in the long run. However, WHO officials said as of now there is no such evidence. The WHO's fact-finding mission is investigating the outbreak. The role of the international experts here is to learn along with you about what, what um, this virus is doing in a new situation. And then we will be working very closely with the government to strengthen its efforts to bring this under control as quickly as possible. More than the risk of the disease, the government is now battling the fear that is gripping common people. The number of patients visiting South Korean hospitals has dropped as subsequent infections occurred in the healthcare facilities. Over 2,500 people have been quarantined. People are commuting with face masks and schools remain shut temporarily. As of now, doctors can treat symptoms of MERS such as fever or breathing difficulties. However, there are no vaccines or no specific medicine that could cure MERS. The first MERS patient in South Korea travelled to four Middle Eastern countries, which means he exposed fellow patients, their families and healthcare staff in several facilities before getting diagnosed. A major cause of fear for the outbreak among the international community. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's all from us. Goodbye.